We're all still mourning the death, the Patira of Rav Chaim Knievsky. We're still, as it were, in the midst of the Avelis, all of the Jewish people. We lost our father. And I want to share with you something that was bothering me tremendously for a good part of the week until I got some clarity on this issue. I was very to be by the Leviathan, by the Hespedim. And one of the most interesting of the Hespedim was from his son, Rav Shlomo Kanievsky. And he said something that really, really bothered me as follows. He said that when the stipler was in Iftar, Rav Chaim decided to take upon himself, Le'ili Nishmas is his great father, to say a shir in Yushami. And the shir was four daf of Yushami, four pages of Yushami, every Mosi Shabbos, he said the shir. And when the year ended, he stopped saying the shir. And someone asked him, Rebbe, it's a, it's a good shir. Why don't you continue? He said, it's a bit of terror for me to prepare this year. And then the person asked him, how much time does the Rav spend preparing this year? He said, five minutes. Five minutes. And that was the end of the story. Shlomo pointed out, he said, we don't understand exactly why that's spittal Torah, but that was that was the story. Of course, there's many great things we can learn from this story. That for Rav Chaim, it took him five minutes, perhaps, to prepare a, uh, that's what it seems at least, it took him five minutes to prepare four pages of Shami to say a shir, and how careful he was with his time, five minutes. We know the Vilna Gon at the end of the year said that he had five minutes of Bittal Torah. He made a he made a calculation for the whole year, he had five minutes of Bittal Torah. There's many, many things you can take from the story, but something that really bothered me is why is that Bittal Torah? He's preparing a shir for people. Why is that Bittal Torah? Right? No, that, that was, at the time I heard this, it was very, it was bothering me very much. And what made the question even worse was the next thing that, or maybe it was a few things after that Shlomo said that he used to real, everyone knows that Rav Chaim used to really, really, uh, really receive piles and piles of letters, piles and piles. Any, anybody who sent him a letter, he would answer. He'd been six, seven-year-old kids. So someone asked him once, Rebbe, six-year-old kids, what are they asking at the end of the day? Why do you answer these letters? Is it a waste of time? He said, it's not a waste of time. It gives them chesed. So I don't understand. Preparing a shir on Talmud Yushami for five minutes, that's called Bittal Torah. But to answer the question of a six, seven-year-old kid written with a crayon on the back of a napkin, yeah, that's not Bittal Torah? I'm confused. What's Bittal Torah? How do we understand this? How can we come to grips and understand really what Bittal Torah is? And anybody who has any connection with Yeshivas, Koilim, Teira, knows that Bittal Teira is something very Chamor, right? It's a very Chamor thing. Chazal go to great extents to speak about the, um, the, the punishment, the great transgression of Bittal Teira, right? It says a person who um, is Mavatal Teira, he'll have great Yisurim, he'll have great punishment, and terrible things happening, and it's a bazillion to the Torah, it's a disgrace to the Torah, right? So, I really, really, at this point, was highly, highly confused. How can it be? How can it be that five minutes, how can it be that five minutes of Rav Chaim's time preparing for Blad Rishami's Bittal Torah, and on the other hand, writing tshuvas to six-year-old kids on crayon in the back of it. They're written in crayon in the back of napkin. It's not Bittal Torah. This was, this was baffling me. And it gave me no rest. This question gave me no rest, right? And it gave me no rest in my own life, right? Because I'm a Rosh Koyl, I sit in Koyl, I try to prepare Shirim, I try to write Svarim, I try to help people as best as I can. How do I know what Bittal Torah is, right? If this is Bittal Torah, and that's not Bittal Torah, so who's telling me what Bittal Torah is? Maybe I'm doing Bittal Torah. Maybe, maybe I have to uh, rethink my whole schedule, my whole Seder Ayyam. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. If four blood of Yishami is Bittal Torah from Chaim, yeah? And writing questions uh, to, kid, to that on the back of napkins from six-year-old kids, not Bittal Torah. So what's Bittal Torah? What should I be doing with my life? What and what is the answer to this question? And it gave me no rest. And especially I know today, this is a very difficult question for people. What should we be doing with our time? We have a lot of time today. Because Baruch Hashem, we have a lot of gadgets. We have uh, iPhones and we, uh, myself, but people do have iPhones. 
and people have computers, and people have this, and people have that, and cars, and all sorts of gadgets at the same time. No one seems to have any time today. People seem to be so busy. You try to call someone, you call them, and you email them, and then you do this, and send a text, and, and this, and this, and this. You can never get a hold of them. People are so busy today with so many things, right? But what should we be doing with our time? What is Bittal Torah, and what is not Bittal Torah? This is the question, and I'm going to leave this as food for thought, and Bezrat Hashem tomorrow to offer an answer to this question.